Uh, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. <clears throat> I'm going to go through um, the January 2021 Mechanics M1 International A Level paper. Um, I'm going to go through it video. Each video will be one question. I'll collect the questions together in one playlist. And in the description of the playlist, the playlist you'll see the, you'll see in the description of this video a link to the playlist. Also, at the end of this video, there will be a link to the playlist somewhere up here. And you will also see in the playlist description a link to this particular paper in PDF form. So if you want to try to answer the questions um, yourselves first, and then you know if you have any problems, look at the videos. Um, you can do that. Okay. So now, first of all, I'm going to start with question number one, and we have a small stone. It's projected vertically upwards with a speed of 20 meters per second from a point O, which is five meters above horizontal ground. The stone is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity. We need to find the speed of the stone at the instant when it is two meters above the ground. Okay, so now, in order to do that, we need to think about where we're going to take as our initial position. Okay, so we have the ground, and we have like a certain distance above the ground, five meters. So this stone is projected from five meters above the ground. Okay, five meters above the ground. So let's say this is the ground here, and this is five meters above the ground, and this is like our initial point. That's the beginning, that's like the origin. That's where we start from. Okay, and we know at this position the speed okay is 20 meters per second and it's projected upwards from this position and what's going to happen it's going to reach a, a highest point it's going to reach the top of its flight vertically upwards it's going to reach the top of its flight and then it's going to go down again okay eventually you know hitting the floor and it goes down so it's going to reach the top of its flight and then go down the question is telling us to find the speed of the stone at the instant when it is two meters above the ground. Now it's projected from this height, which is five meters above the ground. And we want to find the speed when it's two meters above the ground. Now it's going to reach two meters above the ground after it's gone to its highest point, And then it's fallen down. And then it's gone below the point that it was projected from. And now it's going to be two meters above the ground. So let's say that's two meters above the ground. Okay, so that's three meters below the point that it was projected. So we got to now think about the Suvat equations because it's been projected upwards with a speed of 20 meters per second. It's subject to the force of gravity which is acting downwards. So I'm going to say let's take Suvat, the Suvat equations. I always like to write Suvat, S-U-V-A-T, Suvat, and then fill in the things that we know about between this point and the point which is two meters above the ground. So we're looking starting here and ending at this point, between these two points. Now I'm going to take up as positive because it was projected upwards. Okay, so if I think about all of these quantities, my S is going to be minus three because it's three meters below the point that we are considering as our starting point. We're taking up as positive, so downwards would be negative s is not the distance traveled s is the displacement the mistake that people make they think s is going to be the distance it's covered like it's gone to the top of its flight then it's gone down and so they try to figure out what the top of the flight is they try to figure out what distance has gone down and they use that as s and that's completely wrong s is the displacement it's a vector quantity it's how far something is from its initial position its initial position is here five meters above the ground at the point when it reaches two meters above the ground, it's three meters below its initial position. If we're taking up as positive, that gives us minus three meters. Very, very important to make that distinction between displacement and the distance covered. S is the displacement, not the distance covered. U is the initial velocity, which is 20 meters per second upwards, so it's positive. V is the final velocity, which is the, the velocity at the point when it reaches this level. And it's going to be on the way down, by the way. So it's going to be a negative velocity according to our calculations. So we have to find that anyway. That's V. A is 
the acceleration, which is due to gravity, which is acting down, we're taking up as positive. So this is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And time, well, we don't really need to know the time in this question. We just need to know the speed when it reaches 2 meters above the ground, or when it is 2 meters above the ground. So we got S and U and V and A. Now there's a multitude of equations we could use, and we could use combinations of them. But there's one equation which is basically V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. That equation will yeah, we will be able, we'll be using S, U, V, and A, and we have all those things with one of those unknown which we have to find. Okay, now just a little side point: the equations of motions are all based upon V equals U plus A T, which is the gradient of a um, speed time graph. A equals V minus U over two T, the change in speed over the change in time, and also S equals U plus V over 2 times t, which is the average speed times the time taken, which is actually the area of the trapezium in a speed time graph, the area under the graph, the distance traveled. So those two things, those two equations here, are what all these equations are based on. They're all derived from them. So if you were to calculate your, uh, for example here, if you were to calculate using these two equations, or combinations of them, and get the answer, it's absolutely fine. Okay. The equations of motions that we memorize, like v squared equals u squared plus 2as, s equals ut plus a half at squared, and so on, they're basically you know, um, derived from these two equations, combining these two equations together. Like, for example, you'd make v the subject of this and substitute into there, you make u the subject of this and substitute into there, and so on. You make the t the subject of this, substitute into there. All those equations we find are all based upon those anyway. So it doesn't matter whether you use these equations or you use the ones that you've memorized, um, it's absolutely fine. Okay, if you forget these equations, you can use. If you forget what this equation is, you could use those two basic equations to find anything you want. Combine them together. But anyway, if you memorize the equations of motion, it makes it very easy. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we've got to find V squared. We know U is 20, so that's 20 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times negative 3. Very important that, that those two are negative, you see. So you've got V squared equals 400 plus, it's going to be positive, that's 6 times 9.8. Let's figure what that is. You're going to have uh, 6 times 9.8. That's going to give you 58.8 plus 400, that's 458.8. So V squared is 458.8. So V is going to be plus or minus the square root of the answer, which gives us, hold on, what have we done there? I didn't, I didn't add 458.8, sorry, square root of that. The square root of that gives us 21.4196. 21.4196, so V is going to be, um, for us, it's going to be negative 21.4 meters per second okay that is the velocity okay the velocity because it's going downwards but the question didn't ask us for the velocity they asked us for the speed and the speed is the magnitude of the velocity so the speed is going to be 21.4 meters per second even if the question said find the velocity we wouldn't say negative 21.4 because we've decided to take up as positive. No one told us to do that. We would say its velocity is 21.4 meters per second heading towards the ground or in the opposite direction to what it was thrown at. Okay, so that's how we would state it. But here we don't have to state a direction because they just want the speed. So we can just write the speed. We don't write it with the negative sign. We want the magnitude of that speed, of that velocity, sorry. Okay, so for part B, it says the total time we want to find the total time between the instant when the stone is projected from O and the instant when it first strikes the ground. So again, you're going to have the same kind of situation. It's projected from O, okay, and it's gone up, it's come down, it's hit the ground now. The ground is 5 meters below O. It's still projected upwards with a speed of 20 meters per second. It's subjected to a gravitational pull of minus g, because I'm taking up as positive. That's going to be, I'll just put g for now, and then we'll write it in our formula. So it's g downwards. I'll just, those arrows mean, tell us it's acting downwards. Um, and we want to find the 
time between the point when it was rejected and when it hit the ground. Now again, there's lots of ways of doing this. I personally prefer to use this way where I use suvat again. Okay, the suvat will be slightly different this time. Um, again, I'll take up as positive. Um, now, the S is different now, because now it's got all the way to the ground, which is 5 meters below where it was thrown, so that's negative 5 meters. Okay, we're taking up as positive again, because it was projected upwards in the beginning. U is still the same, 20 meters per second, because we're starting from the same point. V is something we don't know. Um, A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, uh, one little point, that V cannot be the same as this V. This V is when it was... Three me two meters above the ground is V when it hits the ground is going to be different. It's going to be more than that, in fact, because it's going to have been falling longer. Um, the time is what we have to find. Okay, so again, our equations of motion, if you know them, it makes life a lot easier for you. You've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, um, we could, if you wanted to, find, uh, well, we can't actually because we don't know the time. So yeah, so this is probably the easiest way to deal with it. Now we're going to get a quadratic equation here. We'll have two t's, t and t squared, which are unknown. And we'll see what those two answers mean towards the end. So we know s is minus 5. So that's minus 5 equals u times t, which is 20 times t, plus a half times a, which is minus 9.8. So it's going to be minus a half. So I'll, I'll just put the values in. A half minus 9.8 times t squared. So we're going to get minus 5 equals 20t minus 4.9t squared. This leaves us with a quadratic equation. If I bring the t squares to the side that become positive, you're going to have 4.9t squared minus 20t minus 5 equals 0. So these two terms, I had to um, bring them to this side by adding 4.9t squared and subtracting 20t from both sides. Now I've got a quadratic equation which I can solve Okay, for t. So I know that um, the formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So I can just apply it to this. So t equals minus b, so that's 40, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 20 squared, which is 400, minus 4 times a, which is 4.9, times c, which is minus 5. All over 2 times a, which is 2 times 4.9, which is 9.8. So that will give me two values of t. Okay, so I can stick that in my calculator and get two values of t. So I have 40 plus the square root of 400 minus 4 times 4.9 times minus 5 divided by 2 times 4.9. Okay, so just make sure my 40 plus or minus 400 minus 4 times 4.9 times minus 5 over 2 times 4.9. That gives me, hold on, let's see, what a minus b, minus b. Ah, what did I do? Sorry. Okay, now we have to solve this equation. It's a quadratic equation. So what we can do is we can um, use the quadratic formula. So t equals, um, it's like um, x equals mi um, minus b, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So minus b will be minus minus 20, which is 20, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 20 squared, which is 400. Don't have to worry about the minuses. We're going to get squared there. Minus four, b squared minus 4 times a, which is 4.9, times c, which is minus 5, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 4.9. Okay, so now I can find um, my solutions for t from this quadratic, from this, um, quadratic formula. So I'm going to have 20 plus the square root of 400, not 400 squared, sorry. I already squared it. 20 squared. Okay, that's 20 squared, which is 400. And I, I, I wrote it and I squared it. Forgive me for that. 400 minus 4 
times 4.9 times minus 5. All over 2 times 4.9, which gives us 4.31795. 4.31795 seconds and it will also give us another time remember we're going to put minus here as well let's see what that gives us i think it's going to give us a negative time from the way the question looks and i'll explain why and what it means and what we do with that it gives us minus 0 0.236 2363 minus 0 0.2 uh, was it 26 236 Two, three, six, six, three. Well, what am I doing? Negative. We don't actually need this answer anyway, but I'll just write it down. Negative zero point two three six two three six three one. Three one dot 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 whatever it continues on. Okay, now what does this negative time mean? Well, it's just basically this quadratic equation has two solutions where it hits zero. One of them is when f time is 4.31, and one of them when time is minus 0 0.23. So if you have your time axis and your um, s axis and your, um, you know, your basically, yeah, your time axis here, okay, and this is your s axis, your height, basically what's going to happen, it's going to hit zero height at two places. One is here, which is, 4.31 whatever and one is here which is negative 0 0.23 whatever but of course we can't have a negative time we we are concerned about from when time is zero which was when which was when it was this high okay so we need the time from here to here which is just this time here from time is zero up to 4.31 okay this is just a quadratic equation that hits the t axis at zero the t can't be negative so we just ignore that part and we know that when time is zero is when it was thrown, which was when it was this high above the ground. Okay, so therefore, we know that we're going to get time equals 4.32 seconds to 3SF. Okay, we could write it as 4.3 if you want as well, uh, because we've got G, we've used G, so you can use 2SF or 3SF. I just prefer to stick to 3SF to be on the safe side, because it's acceptable for the, all the answers when we can round it. Okay, so there we have the answer to part A and part B. So the very the few important points here are that S does not mean the distance traveled. S means the displacement, which is the relative position to where you start your, you know, where you take your initial position. I took my initial position at O, so in this case, S was minus three, and in this case, S was minus five, because I took up as positive in both cases. All right, so there's the answer to question number one. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in this playlist that will appear in this area here. And below that, we will have a playlist for this topic of, I guess it's kinematics. Um, and then you're going to have um, a playlist that will, sorry, um, a subscribe button that should appear over here. On the top of the page, I'll take you to a card which will take you to another uh, M1 past paper. Thank you for watching and see you soon.